they, they didn't get any. Who didn't get any cake? Oh, are, you feeling, oh. are you feeling an emotion now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling deep loss. It's like air, it's all over again. <laughs> Spoiler! <laughs> thanks very much for taking the time. Um, it's from, so first of all, thank you very much to Byron, because Byron basically gave me the title of the talk, A Brave New Idea, and I just ran with it, and because Byron was, uh, I said, I explained to Byron what I want to do, I wanted to talk about a different way of making games that doesn't involve running a game studio, and it's not about micro studios, it's about a games production company, like film and TV do it, because uh, that's what I'm doing at the moment, what I'm trying to establish at the moment, and the reasons why and what, so uh, the reasons why. And I just gave that to Byron, and Byron said, I need a title, I need a title, I'm like, I'm busy, I don't know, and then he just put that on, a brave new idea to the shit, and that was the title. Uh, I love the title, it's brilliant, you, you know, I used to work at Lionhead, this is kind of like a brave new idea, this is, I lo love all that sort of like stuff, so I was stuck with it, so thanks Byron for that. And if it's not what you're expecting, you can blame Byron as well, so, which helps. So, <laughs> so the other thing is a quick public service announcement, just, uh, I just wanted to remind people that there's only two, two hours and fifteen minutes to drinks, pub and stuff. Uh, Perseverance pub, apparently the easiest way to get there is follow the people to who know where it is, and apparently quite a lot of people know where it is, so it's, it's fine. It's turn left, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. so we can all do this. And this is quite important because it's all networking, so we can all talk and stuff, that's great. Uh, but uh, let me get to uh, talk about what uh, I really want to talk about, which is uh, first about me and then about what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to do next, uh, what I'm currently doing and how I'm making games differently at the moment, or want to get make, uh, make games differently. So, a little bit about me, I worked at Lionhead for uh, 11 years, I've been in the industry about 15, 16 years, I can't remember. Um, I worked in Black and White, the movies, Fable 1, 2 and 3, uh, I did coding, design, production, and uh, when I was at Lionhead Studios, I did this thing where I wanted to do, learn as much as possible about making games from all the different departments, rather than going up the hierarchy, because, let's be honest, there's only, with Lionhead, you know, if you've got people on you, there's only so far you can get up and then there's Peter and then, you know, you can't really pass him, so far away. So, um, and then I left in 2011 because it was after Fable 3 and I wanted to have different experiences. I felt like I've learned all that I could, that I could learn and I wanted to do more things. And I be became an independent developer uh, and did many different things. I made a game with Jonathan Ross called Catch Up Aliens. I also helped a medical company to develop a augmented reality app for um, a uh, convention that was a very interesting gig. So I did this and I also did a little bit of kind of like trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And uh, and also besides games, what I do, I'm on the BAFTA Games Committee, so I do a lot of stuff at the BAFTA and I'm also co-founder of the Radius Festival, the Peace Stewart. Uh, that happened last year and the year before. So I do a lot of different things with different people, and that's kind of like me. I'm involved in many different things, not because I think all my ideas are great, because it's not most about my ideas, it's because it's about enabling people. I'm a very firm believer that, you know, there's many great ideas out there, some of them are mine, some of them are yours, and collectively we should all make sure that all the good ideas get out there somehow, and, uh, and we should help people as much as we can. So that's kind of like my thing, so I'm always involved with everything. I'm always running around, and if you ever see a focused picture of me somewhere, please send them to me, because I only have blur blurry pictures of when people take a picture of me, which says probably something. I'm all about basic collaboration. So a year ago, what I did is, very quietly, this is kind of like the first of like time I'm talking about this, I founded a company called A Brave Plan, because what I wanted to do, I wanted to find a way of making different types of projects with different people in different constellations, but I wanted to do it my way. Basically what I wanted to do is, I want to create a games production company that creates games, but that, that is not limited to, uh, you know, the, 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 the type of games or the kind of like the, 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 the projects it's involved with is, uh, is or platform orders or publishers or developers or, or the staff, or all these things. I wanted to be involved just with cool projects and work with the right people uh, uh, with the great people, the right people for the right project. So it wasn't a game studio. I didn't want to create a game um, studio that makes games because I, the idea of running a game studio, it's, it's always, it's kind of like there's so much overhead going with it, which is, um, and it wasn't the thing that I wanted to do for various reasons. That's not, a, not to say that it's wrong because it isn't because there's no wrong way of doing things. I don't, uh, I believe. Uh, it's just, it wasn't my cup of tea. So I saw myself as an independent games uh, uh, production company. And um, not, not indie either, because indie, nobody knows what indie means, so I didn't want to go there. 
And uh, independent to me means that uh, nobody uh, owns the company but me, because it's just me. So, but, you know, it's good. And uh, the reason why I have a company as well, because, you know, tax breaks and all these cool things that the government offers, you have to have a company. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's 15 quid to find one, and then you just have an accountant, and job done. So, well, the reason why I wanted to do it, so basically, as I, as, I mentioned, but as I mentioned before, it's a games production company, not a game studio. And here are the, uh, the reasons why. I, I don't, for example, I don't have an office. I don't have an office with lots of employees, it's just me. I, I enjoy working with great people. For me, it's all about collaboration. And I, I, want, I have different ideas and projects what I want to do, but I also uh, talk to people and they have really great projects and I really want to help them in a more official way as well. So I try to uh, wrap my brain how to do this if I were to run a game studio or a micro game studio or also about the traditional way. So I on purpose thought about how can I do this, uh, how, which, what, what is the right philosophy to apply to, to my way of making, wanting to make games as well. Because I wanted to, I have some projects in mind where I know that you know, this would be great for a specific publisher uh, or even for a specific PR company to look after it. And, and I wanted to be able to look at each project that I want to do individually and go like, what are the, 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 right, the, the, the right elements for that project? You know, what are the right people for that project? What's the right company to bring that project to? Should I do it alone? Should I, should I sort of like work with other co-producers and stuff? So, um, and I was trying to figure out if that's even possible, is that if that's a good way of doing this, if the industry is set up to, to work that way, and, you know, and how um, other industries do, do it. Luckily, I was, uh, I, I was, I spent some time with TV companies and film companies, and that's what I, I soaked quite a lot how they do it, which is quite interesting. So I'm going to talk a little bit about film and TV production uh, in the very short version. So uh, TV, uh, film, let's start with film. Film studios, there used to be a time in the very beginning when film studios did everything. They did everything from, from developing, producing, distributing, and even exhibiting films. It was like a, a, one, a one big house thing, uh, and every person work, was working for a film studio. That's down from the, from the director, writer, to the, even the, the art actors, they all signed up to studios. And then that worked in the beginning, and there was about five big studios, and then eventually in the, I think, late 40s or the end of the 40s, uh, the uh, American government broke it all up with an antitrust law because they said, you can't own everything, you can't own all the, the whole pipeline, you can't you know, dictate what films are made, then make them, then distribute them, then own the, key, uh, the, the cinemas to show them on all these things because you just didn't dodge your stuff with it, with it, which they sort of like did. And then the studio systems sort of like disappeared and production companies uh, appeared. And the way it works now, the way film works, and I've spoken to a couple of people, a couple of people also I know are, uh, as a film director I know as well, and it's, 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 it's really complicated, but it's really cool. So as a film distributor, for example, Universal Pictures, you don't really make the movies. You might have the rights to, for example, the, uh, uh, an interesting IP, or, but what you then tend to do is you find a production company that you believe can deliver the movie, and uh, you know, which in our case would be the developer, and then you attach the stars to it, and you know, some of the stars have their own production companies as well, and uh, and then you know, the movie sort of like gets made, and sometimes several production companies make that movie, and uh, and and it gets even more complicated than than that. For example, distribution-wise, for example, Universal Pictures might distribute a specific movie in the U.S. and um, but not in Europe, where Warner Brothers might do it in Europe, and so on and so forth. So this is kind of like um, this open market of a production company makes a movie and then sells it to the different territories, the different uh, distributors and so on and so forth. And I found this quite an interesting model because I talked to people about it, why it is like that. And they said, well, because it's a flexibility thing. Like, you know, that, that for example, this distributor might have a better reach for this type of movie in this type of country and this type of territory. Or, uh, you know, for the bigger movies, the, the two distributors might work together to get the budget and have four production companies working on it and so on and so forth. And I really like the, and also the most important is because they, they wanted to make sure that the right people work on the right project. That was always the most important thing. There's a lot of problems with that model itself, but I found the idea quite intriguing, so I looked into that a little bit more. And uh, then I also had spent a lot of time with the TV production companies as well, um, and that was an amazing experience. Because TV production, it's, it's quite a tough job, I think, but 
they, the way they do TV shows is, is fantastic. I mean, it's, it's in a way like, the efficiency is, I've never seen so, so many efficient people in one room. I mean, for example, if you take like your average panel quiz uh, on, on TV, I mean, you know, if it takes like three weeks to make, a producer comes in first week, there's just the producer there, uh, or like, let's say it takes a month uh, for the sake of it. Uh, producer comes in the first week, puts his team together, so there's only like one, two people in the office in the first week, and they work out the format together. And then the second week, they get the researchers in and the uh, uh, researchers runners and the associate producers, and they at that point know all the content bits that are needed. So they go out, they either uh, fill the, they, 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 they produce all the content for the show that could be just questions, that could be text, that could be going and filming stuff somewhere else with, uh, with another with another freelance the whole set that happens for like two, three weeks, and then they put the show together. So the third week, like the two days before the actual recording of the show in the studio, the office, that's when the office becomes really busy because you've got the director in there, the lighting technician, everyone comes into the, into the production office and just works out if, uh, you know, if stuff, uh, what, all the stuff that needs to be done. Then uh, they, um, on the day of the, the recording, they record it all, uh, you know, with, with even more crew, and then the day after recording, it's just a production manager and the production coordinator back in the production office because they have to stay on to pay the bills that come in for the next two weeks. Well, it's the producer and everyone else is off on the next job. And I have experienced that a few times, and there's a couple of things what, what really, what was quite amazing. The way they got the people together for each uh, show was even, even different topical shows was like they made sure they found the right people for the specific topic of the show. So they always had like different uh, researchers and producers that, who knew about the topic. Then the other thing uh, that I really found fascinating, there's a common language in, 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 in TV production because you work for so many different production companies, you're essentially freelance, you work for so many different, so many different productions that everybody kind of like seems to know what each job means and what it entails. There's no kind of like you have to you have to get them, uh, you have to um, first sort of like um, uh, explain what they need to do and how it all works, you know, because with game studios, like, ask different game studios what a producer is and you get 15 different answers and nobody, still nobody knows what a producer does or even what a level designer does or what a content designer does and then a creature designer, it becomes really sort of like muddling complicated. And in, in TV production, the way they normally work is you start off as a runner, then you kind of like you experience all the different ones, and at the end you kind of like you kind of like get the idea of what to work like on. So now there's the other interesting thing: the tool sets that they use, which I find quite hilarious, is they um, there is there is there is for example this. Everybody seems to they, they have got a couple of Excel templates for the production coordinators to sort of like fill, um, get all the costs ready and and then ask, oh that looks really cool. Where does that where does that Excel template come from? Who did it? And the thing is, nobody knows who started this Excel template. Somebody started it, some production company, about 15 years ago. And it just made its way. And it just became de facto standard for the smaller companies. And it's kind of like this weird thing because, you know, that person went on to the next production, so on and so forth. And the other interesting thing is I talked to a lot of them about, so, okay, what about things like security, you know? And they said, yes, job security is a problem, of course, because, you, you know, you only work as long as the job is, and sometimes you don't know what you're doing next month and so on and so forth and, and uh, but they have learned to live with that in a way and I said so how early do you go and look for a job and he was like well what if he was like, well you know so I finish on Friday so I'm gonna call about Monday maybe or Tuesday maybe I get something by that as well you know so the, the, the idea is being that they he's he, the person I spoke to he, They've been in the industry for a little while, so of course there's loads of connections going around. He always, get, you know, they always get phoned up if there's something going on. I found that very intriguing, from because for several reasons. Again, there are many downsides to that system, but I really liked that idea. I really liked the, the idea because they were focusing on working with the right people for the right sort of project as well. So. I, um, I decided I want to do that as well. This is what I want to do with my production company. And, um, and I was, at the last year, spent going around talking to people, talking to, to investors and, and, and publishers, and, and because I, have got a, I had an idea as well that I really wanted to do. So I was going around and I was, uh, I was sort of like talking to people. And these are the three important things to me, the reason why I want to do this. So collaboration, share, and focus. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that as well. So collaboration, for me, it was, Important for me, the most essential thing, essential thing is that working um, with the right, with the right people, collaboration. It's nothing to do. Like I've got, a, I might have a great idea, but if I don't get the right people on board, then my idea is shit. Essentially, it's all about executing a vision. And there's not to say I just need to hire an artist or an animator, or whatever. I need to get people on board that are have the same vision or that can complete the vision. 
And that was the most important thing for me. This is the, the focus where I started with the idea. And um, I didn't want to do the mistake of like having a game studio where I hire for one project. Yeah, I've got an idea for one project. You know, if I've got a game studio, I want to do this racing game, for example. So I'm going to hire all the specialists for the racing. I want to make a racing game. Artists, racing people who love racing games, and, and then so on and so forth. And you know, it's a great game. K okay, Games out. Everybody loves it. And uh, then next project, and I'm like, mm, actually, I don't want to do a racing game. I want to do a jump and run game that involves unicorns and whatnot. And then maybe half the team wouldn't want to do that anymore because they're like, hey, you're kind of like not into the unicorn thing. And I'd be like, that's totally cool, but. You know, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to get. Uh, I wouldn't want to fire them all right then. And then and be like, well, if you don't like unicorns, go away. Um, and what happens though in the bigger studios? What you have to do, what you have to do, you have to suddenly sacrifice the vision of what you want to do. Not well, sacrifice the wrong one. You have to also take into account your staff because you have to look after them. It's a game studio. You know, you have to look after them as well. And a lot of them, you know, might, might be in perm or long term contracts. So it's important to look after them as well. So you can't just do any project. You have to find a project that they're also happy with. Because if you don't do that, if you just force them to do any project, for example, if you would force all of you to do to work on the unicorn project, then you might not really like it that much and your motivation might go down and then we might be in trouble further down later, which is understandable because not everybody should like that sort of stuff. So it was like Often it's fine for project one because you hire the people for that, and then for project two you sort of like have to, as a permanent place, you have to sort of like make sure you find something that fits. I didn't want to do that. I, 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 I'm somebody who doesn't, I want to be fair and honest up front. You know, I, I always say I've got different ideas, so I wanted to do it. No, I, wanted to, I wanted to be honest about this, about this for, from, from the beginning. And, but I also wanted to work with other developers. I was like, you know what, these guys, they're making an amazing sort of like game. I've got, a, I've got an idea, maybe we could combine it. Is there a way of working together without it looking weird so that I don't have to close down my company and take a job there or vice versa? Is there a way how we can collaborate and, uh, you know, and make sense out of that? And that was another thing that was quite important for me as well. And uh, then the other thing about finding talent, if you run a game studio, if you have a game studio, if, if you have a project that you want to do, it's really tough to find people. It's really tough to find people for some reason, although there's a lot of great people out there, so you have to do a lot of work for that already. But it's also the important, so we tend to, I, we tend to often think, like, okay, I desperately need an artist now, I, you know, and you do that for a few weeks and you go like, maybe I should just get the next artist that comes to the door because I'm really sort of like desperate. And I didn't want to fall into that trap either, uh, which is a chapter, it's very easy to fall into it. And I, so, so my mission was always like, find the right people for the right project. So I wanted to be in a position where I can start with a project when I've got the cool people sort of like ready for this particular project. So, and uh, yeah, so um, that was sort of like the idea about collaboration. For me, it was all about collaborating. There's nothing to do with like freelancers or, or whatever you want to, uh, whatever term there is. It's more about finding the people who believe in that vision than I do. And I wanted to, the other thing I wanted to share, I wanted to share, um, uh, uh, I wanted to share with, uh, with the team, for example, if I've got a, if, if, if people come on board, ideas changed. They, they, if everybody agrees on an idea, like the core idea, then but the ideas evolve. People bring their own stuff to it, and it involves and becomes better and bigger and greater. And that's what collaboration for me is all about. I wanted to share that as well. For example, it, 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 the, the projects that I'm doing at the moment, you know, everyone get everyone uh, all the all the uh, core people they get part of the back end, whatever pro part of the nature uh, of the profit share basically. Because if, if they put their time in, if they collaborate, if they believe in the idea. Then you know they should benefit from it as well for for as long as well because at that point it becomes about sharing success and sharing creative vision. That was really important for me as well because I've I've started off in the industry when I started off in the industry bonuses were really bonuses were something that happened uh, more regularly. So I, I first got a really I got a nice bonus when I worked on black and white and I thought oh, if this keeps going on like this it's going to be amazing. And then somehow the whole bonus thing kind of like didn't work out five, ten years ago because we changed the way we make games and game, uh, teams got bigger and then, and, then, and then you didn't have, and then in the industry generally transparency stuff like it's always complicated when it comes to these things. I didn't, didn't want any of that. I just wanted to make it very easy to share the success as well. But also, not only for the success, but also the spotlight. It's uh, the people. Um, I don't... If, 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 like in film, for example, if you've got, a, you've got the director, you've got the talent, you've got the writer, the production designer, the costume designer, all these people, they, they, they showcase, they, they, they not only showcase the project, but they also, they're their own, they're their own people, part of the vision. And for me, I wanted to make sure that people are not just team members, they're their, you know, they, 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 
but there are also people that can showcase themselves through that, you know, that they, um, through the work that they're doing. So that it's not just, ah, it's George's project and the other people that he's hired to do that. It's not at all. It'll be like, look, this game is great because it's got all these people and all of them are fantastic and they all believe in that vision and, you know, and you should talk to all of them because they all have interesting, they all bring their own thing to the, to the table. And for me that was also important, being able to share that as well um, in, in, in a way that makes sense. Uh, because, you know, sometimes the way I see that, I speak to quite a lot of people, I say, like, I've got this great idea, do you want to be part of it? And they're like, yeah, but I don't want to work for you. I would do this project for you, but, you know, um, I don't be like, yeah, okay, let's, let's find a way of doing that um, as well. So, um, I mean, then, the, for me, it's, then it became also about focus. Uh, it, it, it's, and this is, uh, this is me more distrusting myself that I, I would, probably not be the best person to, to run a, a studio of 200 people with a long-term vision thing because that goes into business territory and I, I'd need somebody who really knows how to do that. And for me, every day if I would do that, I'd be like, I hope that I hope everyone's still got a job in two years' time. That's probably my daily thought would be like, trying to make sure that everything, that every decision that I make uh, is for the good of the people. So I didn't want to put myself into that position either. Um, and uh, so I wanted to, to focus on, focus and make a project like this, you know, focus, okay, this is, here's a pro couple, here's a pro focus on the project and on the people. And I didn't want to, um, um, I didn't want to compromise, I didn't want to be in a position, for example, this project is done, I've created, finished this project and now I've got all these people and I have to find something very quickly to keep, uh, you know, to keep, um, to keep the company afloat or to keep everyone sort of like afloat. I wanted to be in a position, you know, because then, then you end up doing work for hire, you end up doing this and that, and I didn't want to be, uh, be in that position. What I rather wanted to do is be upfront about it. Like, you know, I talk to the people now, talk, uh, talk to the people now how I approach projects and how I approach them in a pair project basis, finding the right people, and I say, look, this is the deal, the project's probably going to be that, that long. Um, you know, I need, this is the thing that we need, this is how, how I would see you collaborating, do you agree, don't you agree, it's, it's kind of like a freelancer gig, but I want you to, you know, to, to, to own part of that as well, and, uh, but, you know, that's it, but as far as I'm concerned, this is the project after that, you know, it would be, you might, it would be, might part our ways and we'll do something else, we don't know, um, but that was quite important for me as well, to be upfront about this, to be able to be upfront about this as well. And uh, yeah, so that was that was kind of like the thing what I set out to do. So I talked to a lot of people last year, publicists, um, investors, and and people. And it, and you know, there's a few downsides and a few concerns about this model, which is totally understandable. And this is what I want to quickly talk about as well. So because it's um, in a way, this model isn't something new. Some people do it as a micro studio thing, but I wanted to consciously do it as this model and label it as such, so it becomes a uh, it becomes of an enabling of collaborators. And I talked to publishers, investors, and the questions of trustworthiness always came up. For example, if it's just George, if it's only production studio and you, you, you've got this idea for this project or somebody else comes to you with, a, with an idea, uh, then you've got to go and find the people when you've got the money, or how does that all work? And then how, how, we can't, I don't think we can trust the people because we don't know the people because you don't we might not have them all yet. You've got a couple of names attached. Is that you know we as publishers and investors we want to invest in a studio because of the, maybe we're hopeful with a track record or with with people that we know, so we feel like you know we are supporting something that uh, that's got longevity and uh, that was the argument all the time and some people said and I said yeah but if you think about it game studios they're so there's such a huge dynamic these days they change all the time uh, internally as well all the time this production model will be much more flexible in so many so like, different ways and uh, we're like yeah yeah that's we totally agree with you but you know we're used to the old way so um, sorry <laughs> and um, uh, that's pretty much where I went along. And then, uh, luckily though, there was, I uh, can't fortunately say who and how, but there was someone, some company that totally believed in this idea and, and you know, and now we're working on the first, uh, first uh, project on that together. That, that, that instead of saying, like, mm, yeah, this, this is a great idea because it focuses on the, the people collaborating, it focuses on the actual project. And, um, so the trustworthiness is a thing, is the reason why people are a little bit scared about this and companies because it's something newer-ish and they don't know where to bring the account accountability. I think that's the biggest thing the issue. 
the question of accountability is an important one. It's you know because you're working with freelancers, you're working with uh, with um, with collaborators. Uh, it, it's kind of like so you know you're not, you're not having a studio. How does it kind of like all work? Do you work from home and all these things? That's a question that needs to be answered on a project per project basis. It's important to not abuse that system, and it comes back to the trust as well. You know you've got to be able to build up enough trust for that to work. And um, you know, for me, the, the, the accountability lies also in the fact that I want to share the profits with those people. So I, with that, I hope that everybody kind of like um, works hard and gives their sort of like best. And the other thing that was important for me is like I don't, I take a lot of time to find the people I want for those projects. You know, I'm, I've got really good friends that say, "Hey, I can do this. Why do you not hire me? You don't like me anymore." Like, no, I like you, but you're totally wrong for that game. Trust me. And you know, and then that's always the awkward conversations you have to have. But I, you know, uh, I don't hire my mates or the people that I know just because I know them. I literally, I go around and talk to a lot of people and find the right person for that project. So I hope at that point, the collaborators and the, 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 the trustworthiness, that's all, that shouldn't be that big of a problem anymore. And um, so, yeah, and the, the bigger, the, the issues with collaborators, the biggest one that I've found so far is what I've just touched upon is more finding the people that can't even work within a model like this. And by that I mean a lot of people have either long-term contracts or are permanently employed, of course, in this, in this industry, or don't trust that model, which is fair enough. Uh, so it's more, you, you often find out like, the perfect person, but you know, um, they, you know they, they, they kind of like didn't wanna, uh, they didn't wanna give it up their permanent job. I totally understand it, because you've got all the awesome benefits there, that's, that's, and this is a, a, new, a new approach of things. And, and then, uh, so, but it's it, so there's a combination of like finding the people. Then you know, are they freelancers? Are they available often as well? For example, I've had an occasion that I've got I had the perfect person, but he's not going to be available for another year. So I was like, well, that's you know, that's a uh, that's a problem. I can't you know, I won't be able to work with that person because I need, need to, to, to this year. So there, there's that whole thing going on here. Whilst when you run a game and you've got all the people employed, you pretty much that's you know, you, you have them there ready to go and run. Um, so that was sort of like the, the big collaboration, the, the, kind of like the, the other big thing is that even, can you even do that these days? Um, the, the people, um, uh, the, 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 the other interesting thing is even if you find the people these days you probably have to take a lot of time to um, sort of like uh, uh, to get to, to uh, understand how we work, because if you work for a game studio if you work for a game studio, then you know over time you learn how to work from that game studio because each game studio's got their own language. So how do we learn the common language very quickly? Um, but yeah, but so far it's been actually okay, no problem with that. Uh, the biggest problem, the biggest question some people ask me, so I'm like, this is a great idea, but are you too early for this? And I'm like, well, someone's going to start it. I don't know. I'm sure that uh, there are some game studios who work that way anyway. Just don't don't push it like that. And, you know, I don't want to come back five years later and then try it again and then it'll be like, well, you know, you're too late now or something like this. So, uh, for me, it was quite, a, quite important to just get in there. So, I just kept pestering and asking people and, and you know, taking meetings and discussing and stuff. So, where I'm at at the moment is, well, I've got, so a brave plan, well, I'm working with some really awesome people on, on a project that we haven't announced yet. I found the right people for the project. Some of them are working on it right now, some of them are going working it in, a, you know, in weeks, a few months' time. Uh, I've got them in four continents. There are some really like, uh, amazing people there that uh, work, have worked in games, also have worked in other, in other, thing, uh, in other mediums as well, and, uh, where this production model actually really, really helped. Um, we, the way we work is we use the internet quite a lot, of course. Um, we have like a daily call that everybody attends to like religiously, which is pretty cool. It's amazing. Sometimes those calls last for two minutes and goes like everything's fine, which are or sometimes they go like for now and if something is not fine. Um, we we have you know the internet has given us ways to to share data securely in a really cool way. We've got a lot of collaboration material using wiki and all these things, and it's been going really really well. And we've been able to because also with this model we've been able to add people to the project. <laughs> When we when we when when it makes sense rather than in the beginning, um, we've been able to do very quick iteration. So, for example, the first couple of months, there's only two people working on this, and we iterated a lot, very very quickly. We showed it 
we showed it around, we showed it a couple of publishers, uh, publishers and they were amazed how quickly the iteration works. And that's just with using things at Unity already. But if I needed something, I got somebody else in for a couple of days and they did a little bit and then, you know, and, and, and so on and so forth. And we're working really smart and we iterate very, very quickly. And very quickly, because everybody was on the board with the idea and everybody understood what we're trying to do, we have an... Um, the core structure is solid of that idea. I mean, it's kind of like it's. It's there's many moments when we, when we go, when we all think about like, okay, do, are we? Is this core structure okay? Do we talk? Are we talking about the same thing? Are the game mechanics? Are they all working across the thing? And it's like everybody thinks about the same problem at the same time. And then we put a list together when we had our meetings with the unknown publishers. Uh, a list together of what, why we made the game, what the risks are that we see. Uh, and we walked into that meeting, at the end of that meeting it was really cool, it's like the pilot said, okay, this is really, really cool, these are the risks we see, these are the things that we think, you know, we need to focus on, and it was exactly the same list that we had, which was really, really cool. And, uh, yeah, so, and the other thing I wanted to say before my time runs up, because it's going to run up soon, um, the other thing is there's a lot of free tools and software that allows you to do this, and bizarrely, Microsoft offers one of those programs, the BizSpark program, so I've, I've signed up to the BizSpark program, you get free Microsoft software for three, year, for three years, and you get free cloud voucher things, you can use Windows Azure and stuff, and it's, uh, it's amazing, you, get, you can use Word, you can use whatever from the, from the MSDN library. It didn't cost me a thing, but it kickstart, you know, it enabled me to go from like, having no software to having a lot of the software. Um, we're using, as I said, we're using Unity to prototype, and that combination of that meant I had, I had, uh, it was really easy for me to start up. As I said before, that's not the only model to do things. I think all models are, there's a place for all models anyway. Traditional games to do, micro games to do, AAA games to do. Hey, if we get another AAA game to do with 500 people here in the UK, or even 1,000 people, or that's even, that's, I, I'd be all up for that. Um, you know, why should you be to do the big games? And um, I think this is just my way of doing different projects with different people and in, in, in this sort of like way and I think it's quite a flexible way that but I wanted to talk about it because I haven't found another person that's doing it the same way and calling it like that and I'd hope that hopefully by talking about it people on the investor and the publisher side would maybe start trusting in that model a little bit more. Um, yeah so but that's sort of like about it. Um, I don't know how many bits I've got five no for Q and A's no Q and A's on the Website because it's shit and it's not no one's shit, so it's just boring. Five, five minutes. Okay, well, if you've got questions, if you've got five minutes, and then I've got the best slide of the whole thing coming after the QA. Can I can shout, yeah. Any questions? Oh. Should have said, yeah, it's all clear, and I could have gone. <laughs> Sorry. That's right. I was just wondering, if, if you're uh, currently working on a project yeah. uh, under this model, how are you operationally intending to? Um, kick off more uh, projects in parallel with the <coughs> projects, uh, if, if this is going to be a, a widely adopted model. Yes, that is correct. So, and I thought about this a lot as well, and um, the project I'm currently working on is one that that is one closer to my life, as, as in like I came up with a very original idea. If I want to, there's a couple of other projects I'd like to work on, but they're not my idea, they're like other people's idea, but I want to kind of rename them. And what I would do is, uh, what I want to do is find the right people who can execute that as well. Like find somebody that from a producer point of view or from a creative point of view who understands how to run a team but also understands that particular type of project as well. And uh, it's kind of like how you know, Film and TV does it as well. They, 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 they even freelance in, well, they, they, the, the producers for, for, for that reason. Very, very so you want to distribute the process yeah. with producers? Yes, exactly. Producers, all, I, the thing about producers is like it's such a clear meaning in TV. Like in TV, producers are creatives. That's it. They run the show, right? Uh, that, when I say producers, I mean people who can run a team creatively, but also from a from production point of view, who understand what the logistical side means as well. It doesn't mean they have got other. They would, of course, have other producers as well, underneath, depending on the size. But you have to find people you can trust. In this case, for this pro project, that I'm currently doing, it's me. That that would be that person. If that makes sense. Good. Uh, more questions? Yeah, right you you mentioned um, in the very beginning transparency. Yeah. Uh, and you've also uh, you've also mentioned um, profit sharing, yeah, and that you're using freelancers, yeah. So, so I don't expect you to go into the specifics, but how how does that work from 
from a logistics perspective. Yeah. So um, uh, that's that's basically uh, it's a very good question, and uh, uh, that's where I had many conversations with the people who know the law. There are several ways of doing this. Um, film and TV does it like like film in America. They they, they all buy unions and whatnot. Um, um, but um, in the worst, you know, in the in the best case, I'll just have to write checks. If if that needs to be done, I'll just find a way of writing checks for the rest of. of Thing. I think somebody told me from a law point of view, you need to. Uh, uh, there is sort of like you have to. There are certain things you have to put in place that, that this is, that, you know, that this is able to. Uh, you can do this, but um, basically, I'm going to find a way. And if, even if it breaks my back, so you you are hiring these freelancers as opposed to they are investing in the project. Yeah, yeah. I'm hiring. I'm paying them as well. They're not. They're not working for free. I'm paying them. You know, and 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 and, and the, uh, the profit share as well. And uh, they. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Sorry, that was the short answer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yes, the... Can I just speak? Yeah. And my understanding is that doesn't a revolution in Charles Cecil might yes. do this kind of thing? Doesn't he use Good. this one, or is it slightly yeah. different? No, no, I don't know. I have, I talked to Charles a few times, but bizarrely we never talked about this. We always talked about it, you know, in this case. Well, uh, I think... I. Although he's, he is the only one that I can think of that he's, who, yeah, who, no, who that, does this. That's because I should have talked to him last time, because I always talk to him. He's such a nice man. He likes but, to talk as well, let's face it. Maybe we talked about uh, the adventures more than anything else. Um, yeah. <laughs> which, no, but that might well be the case, yes. Uh, which, uh, it's a very good point. Okay. And, uh, maybe he's had the similar problems as I had. So, yeah. Okay, so when you're making a game show, you broadcast a game show, it's done. Yeah. When you release a game, yeah. some people su are suggesting the games are a service now. So how do you support your game afterwards when you sort of dissolve the team? I'm sure you've got an, uh, a magical answer. <laughs> yeah, I have. <laughs> good. No, that's a very good question. I also thought about this a lot. And uh, it comes down to um, two things. First of all, um, there are projects that I want to do with, uh, for example, if it's a project that requires a long-term service at the end, um, some of them are, like some games that I do, they might require a few patches to, to do that, so I would budget that in any way, like three months down the line, ask some of the people to stay on, uh, or that be available, you know, for a few months, one, one or two days a week, or however, there's different ways. I mean, in my head, it comes like, in my head, that's doable. Practically, I'm not trying it, so I could fail on that. The second thing, if it's a game that, for example, that requires a lot of that, because it's uh, like an MMO, or Persistent, or one of these, I would actually find a developer or co-produce and co-develop the game with them, like a developer who specializes in that type of thing as well. So that's what I would do. But also, the other thing with uh, the fixing thing and, and this and that, I mean, I hope that from a technology point of view, because I'm not going to, at the moment, the games that I'm planning to do, they're not going to re, they're not invent, they're not very inventive in terms of technology stuff. They're more content-based games. So I hope that it will be a very, very easy to get people into sort of like, you know, Keep looking at it if that would be the case. For example, there are companies who you know, just do Unity development, for example. That's a nice thing. Um, if I would create a specific technology for that, it would be a whole different story. But I'm not, that's not, you know, I'm not, not trying even to go there because let's see, maybe that's a little it's, it's a valid question. It's a valid question. And it, it kind of like the answer that I have is I think it's going to work out. Um, I hope uh, with a model of freelancers and people who can. You know, spend some time on it and using common tools, but this problem will be less of a problem, I think. Yeah, yes? In inspiring, interesting idea. Um, it, if it works, yeah. what's your plan to propagate? Are you, you know, it's like, are you going to, you know, take ideas from the, say, I don't know, process systems or, you know, you document. Here are like best practices, or indo indoctrinate people, or train people, or, or document. Or what are your thoughts? Oh, well, I would love to share this. Look, the way I see about this, I, you know, there's, I want to be more open about the development, how, how this goes on anyway, because this is an exciting. This is for me as a, for me this is kind of like important because it's also where I want to do things. But yes, if that helps, I would sort of like do this. I mean, you know, if if, if I find like-minded people to, to talk about this, great. And if you all want to have my like, Excel templates. You can have them <laughs> at that point, that will be fine. I don't have a problem sharing with these things at all. Um, the, the, yes, yes is the answer. I will. Yeah, is that it? Am I done? Can I just show you one more slide? Okay. Okay, it's important. It's only one out of 30. <laughs> 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 <laughs>